Could we talk a little bit about your recent trip to Germany and the atmosphere of the auto suppliers and the manufacturers there and what the trends were, et cetera? Um, there were a couple of different trends that we saw. Uh, one of the things that was probably most surprising was that among the uh, reduction in work hours, Kurzarbeit, among German automotive suppliers and the general pessimism uh, that Germans have as to their own automotive industry, uh, there still seems to be great optimism as to the United States. Uh, on the one hand, VW uh, seems pretty actively to be moving forward now with their plant in Chattanooga uh, to the point that suppliers are now pretty actively looking at their site selection decisions. Uh, in addition, uh, we also met with a number of suppliers intent on selling, surprisingly, to Detroit to American automotive suppliers. There is one, for instance, uh, that's considering uh, selling a component that would be uh, incorporated in 37 platforms around the world. Uh, even if this particular automaker or OEM ends up filing for bankruptcy, it would seem that not all 37 platforms are going to be canceled. So still a pretty big order despite pessimism as to Detroit. Uh, the other things that we're seeing are that uh, German investment in the United States is continuing pretty dramatically. Uh, we have the Tristan Krupp plant being built in Alabama, maybe 30 miles north of uh, Mobile. Uh, that's drawing a bunch of suppliers over. Uh, in addition, we also have, I mean, of course, the uh, Chattanooga VW facility coming in. Uh, in addition, uh, we're also seeing uh, renewable energy folks coming over. Uh, yesterday and the day before, I was in Chicago meeting with uh, any number of wind and solar suppliers, particularly wind though, uh, that are coming over uh, the American Wind Energy Association annual meeting. Uh, there were two German pavilions uh, with German suppliers coming over. Uh, there were a number of these sorts of companies I met with in Germany as well. Uh, the United States and particularly the Southeast, sort of the arc from Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, Kentucky, Tennessee, Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi, and then in terms of wind, some of the Midwestern states from Texas up to Minnesota, Colorado, Montana, Oregon uh, seem to be pretty fertile ground for particularly German investment in the United States. What things do a, does a supplier need to know if they're in Germany and they're going to, thinking about locating in the United States? What are some of the practical um, things that they need to do um, before they move here? Oh gosh, uh, there's so many things they need to do. Uh, I guess most of them, being fairly conservative, uh, will not really embark on their U.S. project unless they actually have uh, a pretty firm commitment by their customer to bring them over. Uh, generally, if they're going to come over here and build a production facility, uh, the launch customer that's driving them over uh, is not going to uh, take 100% of the output of the facility that they're building. Rather, 30, 40%, 50% uh, seems like a more realistic number. Uh, so companies coming over at least need this basic level of activity out of the facility that they're going to build here. Then they can embark on a site selection program, uh, working with the many fine economic development agencies in the states around to identify sites that from a commercial point of view make sense in addition to uh, then between the sites that from a commercial point of view make sense, uh, trying to get the best economic development offer that they can. <coughs> sort of philosophically, if you uh, look at the decisions that German, I mean Brazilian, Korean, any nation's companies coming to the United States are looking at, when their suppliers coming over, they tend, at least the ones that I've met with in Germany and the ones that personally I typically see, and that I think here in the southeast we see a lot of, uh, these tend not to be the extremely huge multi-billion dollar conglomerates, but rather we see many more family-owned, individual-owned, uh, sometimes fund-owned uh, companies that uh, have a good relationship with their lead customers in Europe, and their customers are telling them, we really would like you to come to the United States uh, because we would like you to be part of the program in the United States as you are in Europe. For instance, in the case of VW, 
uh, that's building a facility now. <coughs> VW is talking to its suppliers in Germany and for the Mexican facility because these folks are already qualified for those facilities. So VW has confidence in these companies. And so these are the logical candidates, again, to be doing, to be supplying here. On the other hand, the mid-sized family-owned, in German one says Mittelstand, companies when they're coming over, uh, to them this is a somewhat even frightening endeavor sometimes. Uh, on the one hand, a potentially lucrative deal with their customer or customers here in the United States. Uh, it, of course, is, seems like a very good business proposition. On the other hand, they worry about the risks of the U.S. market and of the jump to the United States. And so uh, drawing a boundary between uh, the U.S. market and the market entry risks that they see here and what they have built back home, back in Germany, uh, the mother ship, the mother company back home, um, that's one of the major themes that we're seeing, how to capitalize on the opportunities that they see here while at the same time trying to uh, draw a pretty firm barrier between the risks, uh, potential risks of the U.S. market, you know, bankruptcy, commercial risks, financial risks, and uh, the assets in the mothership that they've built back home. When companies come over and there's a flexibility 200, 300 miles in one direction or another direction here in the region, that means there are probably some extremely <clears throat> well-developed, hospitable uh, business parks in South Carolina, in Tennessee, in Georgia, in Alabama, <coughs> maybe even Kentucky, North Carolina, uh, that come into consideration for a facility to supply one of the larger OEMs like VW or uh, ThyssenKrupp. Uh, in choosing among these different sites, uh, one of the offers that companies often are surprised that they can get is that communities uh, will make available to them a plot of land and will often, uh, depending on project size, depending on uh, the number of jobs being created, depending on the skill level of these jobs, depending on whether this is a desirable sort of business that communities would welcome, uh, communities will build them a build-to-suit building. Uh, the land and the building would then be leased by generally an economic development entity in the community to the newly formed U.S. subsidiary of the foreign parent entity. And the foreign company then has a purchase option five years, maybe even 10 years, uh, at which the real investment decision as to the land and the building has to be made. I'd say that if a company cannot figure out in five, six, eight, ten years uh, whether the U.S. market entry has been enough of a, a success to warrant buying the land and buying the building, then they're never going to know. Uh, one of the advantages of this approach from the German, for particularly a German company, is that uh, the land and the building and some of the typical projects that we see uh, would represent maybe 20 or 30 percent of the overall investment volume. Uh, that means this is 20 or 30 percent of the funds that would otherwise be put at risk that do not have to be put at risk for some number of years, five years, ten years in best case scenario. So it reduces uh, the amount of capital you have to Exactly, and it gives the company uh, time to see if the project succeeds and they don't have to make that commitment until they're sure that it has succeeded. Uh, I'd say in the uh, most extreme such situation uh, that I've personally negotiated, uh, the U.S. company or the U.S. subsidiary uh, uh, basically is renting land in a building from a community. The community has taken out a loan uh, from a regional bank here uh, to build them a building. And the only security that the community has received is a pledge of the German parents' stock in its U.S. subsidiary, which means literally uh, that if the U.S. market entry fails, all the German parent really needs to do is hand the community the keys and say, you know, have a nice day. It's terrible, but I mean, these sorts of deals... Uh, but it minimizes your risk. It minimizes yeah. risks, and these sorts of deals are available. On the other hand, uh, that was probably a somewhat extreme situation.